Before the electric boogaloo, there was simply Breakin', a dance movie from Canon Films featuring a bunch of breakdancers, the star of Ninja 3, The Domination, and Shooter Freakin' McGavin. There's no way this is actually any good, right? Welcome everyone to the Collector's Cut, I am Peter and joining me as always is David. You owe me seven dollars, man. This is a movie podcast. Uh, we are working our way through dance movie season for some reason that I can't fathom still. But uh, we did Dirty Dancing last week. This week we are looking at Canon's <laughs> dance epic, Breaking, which is probably more famously known because the sequel's called Breaking 2 Electric Boogaloo. Mm -hmm. uh, more on that later, uh, but yes, uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk about breaking. Uh, we'll we'll start spoiler free if the, as if there was anything to spoil in this movie anyway. But we'll I mean, you say that, but I don't think anybody has any idea what the plot to this movie is. I mean, I just watched it and I don't. So uh, <laughs> we'll get into it. We'll start spoiler free. Uh, I'll mm -hmm. just remind you before we do start talking about the movie. If you're enjoying the show, please do hit the like button. If you're on YouTube, it helps out a bunch. More people will find us. And of course, you can support us over at Patreon. We do some bonus shows over there. I'll tell you more about them at the end of the show. So, hi, this is a breakdancing movie. Both of those words are used very liberally. <laughs> I mean, I felt like something in my mind was breaking as the as yeah, the movie was, was actually, going on. I was actually going to ask you. Um, so, I, uh, sound quality wise, in this movie, I I wasn't sure if it was just my copy, but the entire time I was watching, I could hear this low groaning Scottish noise <laughs> in the background. <laughs> just a, a live feed of my uh, my reactions. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, look. I finally saw the movie where Jean Claude Van Damme is dancing in the background. That's like, I was, yeah, <laughs> that's I was, I didn't know if you know about that. I was gonna bring I, it up. Well, I didn't know it was this movie, but I'd, I've seen the GIF of him dancing like mm. before on the internet, and sure okay. enough, it gets to this this bit of Venice Beach, and I'm like, oh, there's young Jean Claude. He's, he's he's moving his hips. Look at him yep. go. I love the trivia bit though. Expands on that where Jean Claude Van Damme says like, yeah, I was doing like flips and stuff, and they cut it. They didn't want me to <laughs> take away the attention from the main dancers well i mean i think he had the last laugh because jean-claude van damme had a career in movies and the other people in this scene did not hey this according to trivia as well is canon's most financially successful film well that's so... probably why they had a sequel out the same goddamn year i, I yep. couldn't believe that when i was looking up the movie and it was like both are 1984 and i'm like that can't be that's, that's ultra quick um, only to find out that at the end of the credits in this movie, uh, yeah. it actually says coming soon, Electric Boogaloo. And I'm like, wait, you are so confident in breaking that you've already like started making Electric 2? Or uh, the Breaking 2? Electric Boogaloo? Electric Boogaloo? Yeah. <laughs> yes. The only way that I could think is that this movie was originally going to be like two and a half hours long and they realized like, no, oh, no one's going to watch that. So they cut it into two movies and released them both the same year. Okay, if that's the case that I call absolute bullshit, because this movie is so paddy to get to 85 minutes, it's unreal. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. So if they had like a two and a half to three hour version of this, they could edit that down into one coherent movie with a plot probably <laughs> in a hundred minutes. I'm going to say it right now, right? Because mm -hmm. problem number one, where's the plot? <laughs> that's a pretty big problem there yeah you're right there, there's there's almost a tease of some things that could become a plot occasionally mm -hmm. but then they just don't do anything with them yeah i i it actually almost bothered me because the opening of this movie we so just to give the most basic thing here it's There's kelly like it's turbo it's ozone yeah those are our three leads but i would say like the main lead is probably kelly maybe you can make the argument for ozone but I, I, they kept doing this thing at the beginning where it's this idea that kelly is only being like brought on to these dance things and like only being talked to or like allowed in these things because of her beauty like people wanting to have sex with her is 
her story and she is trying to overcome that and that was actually super interesting to me to start with and i guess they realized that so they stopped <laughs> they just decided that's not the plot we're doing anymore goodbye and they just moved on to something else it felt like they were still setting things up for that for about half the movie mm -hmm. and then it just kind of just disappeared completely yep. and i'm not really sure why i yeah i mean like you can kind of see how this could be a real movie at the start right i mean the acting's not good right i will say that across the board there's a lot of just awkward line deliveries it's mm -hmm. not quite like troll two levels of bad but you can check out a review of an extra reels over in patreon yeah. but it's definitely got this really stilty like these people are not like actors with big futures ahead of them okay right. they're you know other than shooter mcgavin who's randomly in this as well but we'll get to him later He's in for just quite a bit in. Uh, yeah. uh, but it's just, you know, she, she's doing classically trained dancing, right? She's got mm. an instructor. She's working a crappy job to make I ends mean, it's meet. Not, it's not like the waltz and stuff like that. No, it is still but it's, jazz dancing, but like it is much more rigorous than street dancers. It's prestigious dancing. It's stuff that you do on stage, at performance. It's all mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Um, and her friend introduced her to these two other guys, Ozone and Turbo, obviously nicknames, who are doing breakdancing and she becomes enraptured in that world and ends up helping them out with a thing when they need a woman. There's actually a moment in this movie where they're rivals, because they have rivals, of course they do. Challenge I love the rivals so much. <laughs> Challenge I love them. them so much. Challenge them, kind of, to a dance-off, and yeah. then they shop with a woman and like, oh no, we get our asses whipped because they have a woman. Would you believe it? We've got a woman main character who is probably itching to prove herself. Uh, so I won't get into any other plot stuff because, uh, like, well, technically let, spoilers. Well, little there is to spoil. Spoil. I'd start to be spoiling it. So th yeah. let's just leave it there. But I, I, like, you can see. Okay, right. This idea that the the classic stuff that she's doing with that asshole instructor isn't working out, but she finds a freedom in this alternative new thing this alternative mm -hmm. new dance that she falls in love with maybe makes new friends maybe there's a payoff to the idea that everyone who works with her just wants to bang her and she feels uncomfortable with that and wants to be respected as a dancer it almost felt they were trying to do something with that because ozone clothes got the hoss for her so i thought oh there's going to be an arc here where he makes some moves she doesn't like it and then by the end they both learn something and he realizes mm -hmm. that he's crossed the line and she's done that no 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 halfway through the movie it just feels that like they forgot that that was something they were they were doing Yep. But you can see what the real movie might have been. And all I could think is that when it got to the end, and there's just something that I kind of realized, wait, is this the final like thing? Like the big thing? Right? Like yeah. we're actually here. And I realized there's only like 10 minutes left. And there's a lot of padding with extra dancing at the end. And like a what I can only call basically a trailer for the movie we just watched. Uh, mm -hmm. Because there's no opening. It's not like the, the credits are playing over this. We already had opening titles at the start. There's just like a montage of all the dance sequences at the end, right? Right after two full dance sequences, we get a montage it's of all the dance sequences, including those two dance sequences. And then the title of the movie comes up, and I'm like, "That was a trailer. That was a long trailer you just showed me for a movie that I just finished." I think that that was supposed to be some level of like a music video because we have two full tracks in this that are, I'm going to use the word sung here, but I want you to know I don't mean it, <laughs> by Ice-T back in what I can only presume is his selling out days. And uh, yeah, he um, they just do, like you said, the whole movie just condensed down to the dancing bits while his song is playing right at the end after the title to the movie comes up like they do the freeze frame title pops up and then this whole extra bit here before the credits start i i kind of thought i was losing my mind at that point i was like is this movie just never gonna end are we just gonna are we gonna roll right into electric boogaloo with no break <laughs> oh god um I mean, hell, the rivals who are a group called Electro Rock, which as soon mm -hmm. as I saw the word Electro, I went, oh, is this setting up Boogaloo? Is this, is this yeah. what that's setting up? Um, do you know they're not credited with names? They're just credited as Electro Rock, Rock 1, Electro Rock 2, and Electro Rock 3. That's their characters. I'd, yeah, the only thing I could think is that Electro Rock, because our two main characters of Ozone and Turbo are actually like well-known street break dancers of the time that were just cast in this okay um i'm wondering if maybe those three were also an actual group called electro rock 
and that's just like mm. they were credited as electro rock you know here's the thing david i don't care no neither do i i'm not gonna check <laughs> this movie is, is just it's there'll be something resembling maybe we're setting up a plot and then there'll be a dance Mm -hmm. either scene or montage right yeah and what was really getting to me is that sometimes they set up confrontations between two characters and some of the characters are exceptionally kind of off-putting and aggressive to other characters for seemingly not a whole lot of reason but mm -hmm. what got me is like okay they seem a bit unlikable the way they're acting initially but we want to bond they're going to get to know each other they're going to become friends that's all fine but then they don't even do those scenes all literally this key conflict is set early on, which is that Turbo really doesn't want to work with uh, Kelly, the main character. Mm -hmm. he, he thinks she's trouble, and he thinks, you know, uh, Ozone's just into her or whatever. He's dead yeah. set against it. He's making little wisecracks. He's really upset about it. And then during the very first montage after they start working together, there's just a random bit in the middle of it where they just hug and they're smiling. And I'm like, oh, I guess they're, I guess they're best friends now. I guess, they I guess danced it out, Pete. That's all it takes. I guess that's it over. I guess we don't have to do any actual character development. It's just, there's a switch that's Look, been clipped. If they had a nice stage set at the United Nations and a good old <laughs> funky beatbox, I guarantee you war would be eliminated overnight. I feel like if you're someone who likes breakdancing, you'll probably enjoy watching people who st are, are allegedly very good at breakdancing, do it in right. this movie. Um, as someone who doesn't really care, uh, I have no ill will towards the the the, the art, I guess we'll call mm -hmm. it. <laughs> um, you know, at, at times I'm like, yeah, okay, they're moving in kind of, kind of an interesting way. One thing I did notice, though, is that anytime they did a close-up or even just like an upper body shot, it kind of just took away from... Yeah. Like, because breakdancing... When you see like a full body doing it, right? There's kind of a way that the body's moving from like head to toe that's given it kind of a look, that's given it this kind of like stiltiness that's what they're sort of building their the whole style around. When you mm -hmm. get just a shot from the waist up and you can't see what the legs are doing in conjunction, the top half on its own just looks kind of silly. <laughs> like oh yeah. You need the there's, whole thing. There's a point in this movie where they're giving uh Kelly an education on this. They're trying to walk it, you know, it's the it's the dirty dancing montage just as easily. <laughs> Uh, but they're trying to teach you this and they do like close-ups of like what they're doing with their hands and like specifically body parts to it and it just takes it all away because you're like oh well when you just focus on the individual bit it's kind of stupid like it kind of <laughs> seems like you're just doing some weird like kung fu looking like ninja stuff that's all i can think of yeah though, i mean I, again i'm no expert and i'm certainly mm -hmm. no one here that's going to sit and like say what good break dancing looks like because i have no idea but the, the the parts that seem like i could sort of see what the style was supposed to be is when i could see the full body because the movement and the way that they're sort of you know the, like like the way they sort of like move their feet and move something or stop their feet and move something else and then kind of mm -hmm. switch and it's those kind of things that make break dancing break dancing on top of the twirling around and all the other right things they do mm -hmm. uh so yeah that stuck out to me um for me, I think a big part of this is that there's a pretty big soundtrack that is actually like, at least it sounds like licensed music. I think I actually recognized one song, probably the montage in the middle. I think I recognized that song. Okay. I mean, I didn't recognize any of it, but the part that got me about it, though, was that none of them really felt like breakdancing music. Maybe it's just mm. of the times. Maybe I'm thinking more like 90s era and stuff like that. But all of this stuff felt like really up beat and positive it like it felt like something like a 16 year old girl would have playing in their room not something that's out on the streets of venice beach mm. except for iced tea but iced tea's just a sellout now anyway so i don't even think that his raps were all that good at that point i i can't say i've got opinion on on mr t that's fair not, not, nah, to, be I mean, confused. not it, to be confused with mr t you know what i mean as in, yeah, no, Mr. T's cool. Yeah, but as in Mr. Ice T. Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say without just saying spoilers, but I mean, honestly, no one should be caring about spoilers for this movie. Like, this is, it's basically an extra reels movie, right? Yeah. It's basically a show, that, a movie that we do on that show. 
except for just maybe it's also not as interesting as some of them. It's it's kind of in this weird no man's land. I don't know. I I did get some pretty hearty laughs out of this. Like, I'm not going to say it's a good movie. Okay. It's just spoilers for the rating at the end. It's not a good movie, but, like, there were so many points in this where it felt like it perfectly straddled that line of it's so goofy, but it's taking itself so seriously that it comes across as hilarious. Yeah, every bit of dialogue that all the street dancers would say to each other when they're angry all, all came off as uber silly to me. Ah, that's why I love the rivals so much, is that they're just like, come on, man, you're nothing, you're trash, we're straight killers, and then they just, like, pirouette their way out, and I just lose it. Oh, God, it's so funny. <laughs> All right, spoilers, you've been warned, everyone. Mm-hmm. I could see this with a shorter review compared to normal. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, no, I was going to give us a prize if we managed to break an hour. Oh, jeez. Well, we'll see if we're breaking the hour. With puns like that, how can't we? <laughs> yeah, the movie the movie starts, right? Obviously there's like a and the opening titles are fine. They do this thing where there's like a they're pretending to spray paint, but then like the title kind of like sort of wipes onto the wall. It's like fine, yeah. whatever. It's, it's it's fine. It is just kind of noticeable that like they couldn't even bother to mask it. Like it's mm. not in sync with the like spray paint can. It's always about like a half second behind. So it's kind of weird that how it just like magically shows up afterwards. David, are you not familiar with Canon Globus as a production company? Honest to God, I'm not. I'm looking at their entire filmography right now, and uh, <laughs> not a lot standing out. Yes, they, they do mostly cheap trash. Uh, famously, I think they did Superman 4. Like, Warner Brothers handed off Superman 4 to them, so that should give you a a taste, if you will. Yeah, fair uh, enough. Some bad Chuck Norris movies, things like that. Anywho, uh... There's an extended dance sequence, which I'll be saying that a lot during this, and I'll have very little to say about any of them. But this is at the the dance studio where Kelly is is training with some dude named Franco. Yeah, she's part of a dance company, and it seems that Franco, you know, they get enlisted in things like stage plays and musicals mm. and stuff like that as just like, you know, we need dancers, and he just provides them for whatever they need. Yeah, and there's a, also an introduction here that she works at a sort of little fast food diner, and her boss is always shouting and yelling and blah blah blah. Sim- mm. Simple stuff. Uh, she meets a friend who I thought was going to be like a recurring character. This is the only time you ever see her in the whole movie. <laughs> but the friend's like, oh, Kelly, I didn't see you there. Um, what are you doing with dancing these days? Oh, I'm still working with Franco. Franco, that asshole. Whoa. Now, that's not the actual dialogue, but that's the gist of the conversation. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and she's just like, oh, you know, I'm going to keep on working. I'm going to die on my feet. And she's like, oh, you mean in this dump or dancing? And she's just like, oh, no, you caught me out that I haven't been making progress. So we see her dancing for a while. Again, the dance sequences do go on for some time often in mm-hmm. this movie. And she's got a friend there who, again, I thought was going to be a bigger part of the movie, but he he's mainly just there to introduce her to the other two guys, but he's like a cupcake. Does he have an actual name, though? I don't think they ever brought it up if he does. Okay, because, like, I'm looking through the credits, and Cupcake's not on there, and I like, maybe so many people here don't have their pictures, I can't find him. Maybe he's Adam. There's someone here listed maybe. Adam who's high enough on the list that it could be him, but I really don't know. That's uh, fair. But, uh, yeah, but it does set up this idea that clearly Franco wants her, right? Because mm. everyone else leaves, she's like getting her stuff, and he comes over and he's like, hey, do you want to stay back for some extra lessons? And she's like, no, I've got, you know, I promised to go do something, blah, blah, blah. He's like, trust me, Kelly, I know what you need. Very intense. Yeah. And she just sort of makes nice and leaves. And I'm like, okay, I can see where this is going. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And again, it seems like it's setting up a very interesting plot here about like, okay, she enjoys dancing, but people are using her for her body. What do we do about that? Well, I mean, at this point, I could have maybe just seen it as it's just a specific story with him, but mm-hmm. they they keep sort of adding to this where uh, Ozone is into her, and then her manager, played by Shooter McGavin, is into yep. her, and I felt like it was going to all bubble up to something by the end, and no, it, it really yeah. does not. Uh, maybe that's in part two. Maybe, maybe, that's, <laughs> maybe yep. that's Electric Boogaloo. That's so, 
but she's taken to Venice Beach. She's giving cupcakes a lift. And she sees the other two guys, Ozone and uh, Turbo, dancing in front of a crowd. And it's all in a circle. They're clapping. This is where Van Damme's in the background clapping yeah, his little heart out. Going he, nuts, oh, man. He's, he's happy. bouncing up and down. And they basically push her in and sort of get her to do a little bit of dancing. And they dance for maybe 30 seconds together, right? Like as, not as even. A, as a group. And yeah. the reason why I'm pointing that out is because the next time she sees uh, Ozone and Turbo, which is when they come to the dance studio she she works out with uh, uh, Franco, mm-hmm. is that she sees them and says, hey, I had a great time yesterday. I'm like, it was 30 seconds. Like, what, 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 like you, you met them so briefly. Yeah. I even, I, I rewound to that bit specifically because I was looking for Van Damme, but I took note of the way that ozone like introduced himself and how she introduced herself to him mm. and it was oh, like they got next to each other in at the edge of the circle and ozone's like oh hey i'm ozone and then she just like smiles and nods like she doesn't care at all and then the next time we see this it's like hey i was that was great yesterday you know <laughs> it's like was it you didn't show it there yeah and turbo's like no, no you don't get to call me turbo turbo's for other street dancers Mm-hmm. So he's like, oh, but, but then Ozone names her special K is her name. So <laughs> she's white and bland, that <laughs> special K. <laughs> so yeah, they show up at the dance studio and they kind of come in and Turbo kind of like dances his way into all the other dancers rehearsing and starts putting on a bit of a show and they end up forming a circle and he starts impressing them all with his, his popping and locking. I don't really understand mm-hmm. what a pop or a lock is, but I think he's popping and locking. And this goes I like on... how we I like how we play into how we don't know nothing about the streets. <laughs> We're just like, oh, is that is this that popping and locking them kids are doing nowadays? <laughs> I'm not even born when this movie came out. <laughs> I'm allowed to no, know any I mean, of this. Breakdancing existed into our childhood, and I, ostensibly it still exists. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you think Scotland's a, a, a cultural center for the for the the street dancing and breakdancing? Man, I don't know. I, mm. I've, I've seen enough what was god why am i blinking on the name now that you and mcgregor movie where everyone's on drugs oh train spotting yeah there you go maybe they did break dancing and train spotting i haven't seen it <laughs> i don't recall any but uh <laughs> been a while so anyway like franco comes out and he's like who are these filthy street trash in my studio and wants them gone immediately He's he's like ten seconds away from just going full tilt racist, but oh. instead he decides to come down on the side of like they're amateurs. <laughs> yes, yes, that's that's what he keeps using. But you can feel like he wants to say another word every time he says it. Yep. Uh, and Alfonso, Alfonso Ozone. Well, I keep wanting to say Alfonso for him. It's because I he's, mean that is his, yeah. No, his real name is uh, Adolfo. Yes. Adolfo Shabadoo Quinones, which I really wish this character's name was Shabadoo. That'd be a much funnier movie. I just, I'm mixing it with Ozone. But anyway, Ozone just sort of introduces himself as a dancer and then kind of storms out and he's like, sort of, you know, fancy hat that he's got. He just kind of yeah. wants to leave. Little fedora. Uh, and it's like, okay. And Kelly's like, oh, I'm sorry. I tried to get him to leave. But it's like, but you know those guys? Like, yeah, yeah. I met them once. And he's like, well, keep it that way because... You know they're they're you know not the right kind for you, and any but then he changes the subject and he starts talking about hey I got the music for this show that we're all going to do and she's ex- she's genuinely excited professionally she's like oh great oh that's great we're going to do this thing that's great he puts the music on and they start dancing whatever the routine for this probably is I assume and it's kind of like they're they're doing it. so they're working through the thing, but then mm-hmm. when she ends up against the mirror he puts his arms around and like sort of forcibly kisses her, yeah she pushes him pushes him away. And then he goes in for the kiss again, so he kind of tries to keep it on, and then she pushes him out the way and storms out saying, oh god, I can't believe this. Uh, this is, uh, you know... It, so I was like, okay, she's now quit this place because the guy was a creep, right? Yep. This feels like proper first act stuff. This is going to be why she needs somewhere new to dance, and would you believe it, she's made some new friends who are very soon, we're going to learn, need a third, need a woman mm-hmm. to be part of the group to battle the rivals. And... What's so frustrating about this is that I can almost see, even though I'm not into dancing, I can almost see if you revolve a movie around dance battles, I could almost see someone who's an inventive director actually doing something with that to make it feel like we're actually watching some kind of fight scene via dancing. Oh, yeah. 
Mm -hmm. I never got that from from any of this. That's <laughs> that's what made it so funny to me because the very first, I mean, we're skipping ahead slightly here, but uh -huh. they get into a dance battle with their quote unquote rivals who, again, these guys are just so non intimidating. I love it. But they get into a dance battle with these guys and we get a whole thing with like ozone and turbo pumping themselves up and they like run across the stage, do a flying crane kick like right in front of their face and then just all four of them one on one just start popping and locking each other and it is the funniest fight scene i've ever seen in my life because <laughs> they play it so straight i i, I don't I, during this as well i was because this is pretty soon actually i don't think we're skipping too far ahead honestly nah. uh mm -hmm. I, I was thinking to myself, like, okay, what actually is this place? What is this, you know, is this a party? Is this something where it's supposed to be where dancers, like, face off and show off what they can do? I was trying to think yeah. of, like, what actually is this event that they're at? And it happens I'm, multiple times throughout the film where I'm kind of thinking, okay, but what is this? What is this? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, there are places, you know, clubs and stuff like that. I mean, my mind goes back to uh, the movie Eight Mile. Mm -hmm. you know, which is all about like rap battles and stuff like that. They have an established place and an established format of we have rap battles. So I can understand there being a place that has established things for like break dancing and dance battles and stuff like that. No arguments there. My thing is that it's such like a well put together place. It almost feels like it's a professional production. And that's what feels out of place for me. Hmm. Like they've got a full like lighting system. They've got a uh, stage. They've got they're paying for iced tea. <laughs> I don't know how much that costs, but it's not not nothing. I don't think he's uh, I don't think he's cafe iced tea though. I think obviously he's he's iced tea in real life. I think in the movie he's just cheap I would rapper man. I, <laughs> I would agree. However, the songs that he sings, he literally says ice is on the mic. So to some extent, mm. he is still iced tea. He's credited as rap talker. Mm -hmm. That's what he's credited as. So that's I, fine. You know, I, 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 I get it. I understand in the in the context he probably isn't, but he couldn't either. He had these songs pre-written for like his own album release, and he just put it in the movie, mm -hmm. or he just couldn't help himself. Like he's selling his own brand, so mm -hmm. kayfabe and and reality kind of crashed down on top of each other. Yeah, um, I can't fair. say I gave much thought to this to be honest. Uh, nah, other than just I went, oh, Ice T's that old. He's like already, and he's like thirties at least by this point. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he seemed old in this too. Yeah, uh, but but no, it was just more of the idea that this this place does feel like an established venue rather than just whatever they could manage to set up, and it felt kind of against the grain of this whole idea of street dancing is what the people of the street like these as we see later on in this movie these poor kids who are down on their times that's how they express themselves so having this established venue for it kind of felt out of place you know yeah it's funny actually because we did dirty dancing last week and that obviously mm -hmm. largely all in the romances which, which is what most people remember it for and like sort of bring it up for mm -hmm. the big thing and it was actually a social class thing and it felt like here you could have like sold a lot of heart here if you really presented it as no, no, this is because like, there's like one scene later on where Turbo's teaching kids who are clearly poor kids who, who are learning mm -hmm. to break dance, and it feels like oh, if you'd focused on this a bit more and sold it as no, this is something that you know they're doing that they love, and you, you could have said you could have put a nice message there, you know, something yeah, inspirational I mean, even. I I think if we're just talking about the broad messaging of this movie, what it ends up being is. There is no broad messaging. What the well, hell are you no, it's, about? I'll, I'll make the argument that it is don't judge a book by its cover. That's what it is. Okay, because, okay. And, and the thinnest possible term, yes. I'll give it to you. Yes, because that's oh, basically Ozone's whole story here is that everybody keeps on shutting him down, shutting him out because of the way he dresses, because of the way he looks, because he is labeled as a street dancer rather than jazz dancer, which I guess is orders of magnitude higher in this hierarchy. Uh, but it's, he's immediately judged upon and he's never able to really show his stuff. And it's only by the end of the movie that we get the turnaround where it's like, oh no, once he's given a chance, he's incredible. 
So, yeah. so, so during this dance battle, uh, a mm-hmm. woman jumps out with an electric rock top on, and she starts yep. dancing. And what was funny to me is that so much of this was this close up of her face as she was dancing that it just kind of came yeah. off as kind of laughable to me because I couldn't see any of the dancing she was doing. All I could see was this intense look right into the camera, and mm-hmm. I was like, okay. Uh, and seemingly that's how they lost, even though it's not like someone declared a winner. It just was like, oh, I guess we lost. Uh, Look, it was three against two. We never stood a chance. <laughs> so, you know, clearly, and I think Kelly's already got the idea in her head at this point. She's sort of watching being like, I'm better than her. I can do this. Right. But it's, it's like the next day or whatever, where they go to Elf, uh, Ozone's place. Right. I keep going to say Alfonso. Right. So right. They go to Ozone's place and they're complimenting like the, the dancing and they're saying, hey, we can't win. They've got a check now. And Kelly jumps in and says, yeah, like it wasn't even the dancing that was that good. They were just, it was just shock and awe. They brought out a pretty girl and that's what they're all staring at. And that's how they won. And then Cupcakes, which, and this is basically his last scene until he's just in the ensemble yeah. at the end, is like, hey, I've got an idea. How about you three work together? You can form your own group and I'll be your manager. Sorry, Shooter McGavin's going to take that role in about 10 minutes' time and we're never going to remember you existed, Cupcake. Yep. <laughs> so, and then we just get a montage. And, like, right before this montage starts, Turbo is still giving Kelly shit, still making, like, eyes and faces and still sort of making it clear that he thinks this is a bad idea. And mm-hmm. just during the montage, they're hugging because I guess they've bonded over the art of dance because they've been training yeah. her how to break dance and that's it and this is the end of act one if you can even break down this movie into acts i absolutely would not i have <laughs> no feeling that that was an end of an act um but no i i honestly it's weird his character arc turbo of how much he was against her but i honestly think that out of the entire movie turbo's probably the best defined character in like what mm. he wants and like how he views the world and such like that we get kelly is all over the place throughout this i don't think she has any real definition outside of like i'm just here to help i am the third one i think uh, to, o- to be honest ozone mm. is kind of all over the place for me as well because he mm. i feel like he, I, I can see how this could become like a proper character plot but he is very like aggressive as the movie goes on Whenever anyone suggests, hey, maybe we should like sort of dress a bit smarter for this edition or something, he gets really uptight and says, Oh no, this is the way I look, man. This is like this is what dancing on the street is. Like I'll not change right. for no one. And but it's to such a point where it, it actually generally got to a point where I'm like, honestly, at a certain point your lack of success is on you now, because you're not even willing to yeah. like put on a bit of a show. No one's saying don't be you. No one's saying like completely hate who you are. But he was so aggressively against even like w- even working with the manager the first time that's brought up. Hey, I've got a mm-hmm. manager working with me. He's going to get as a gig. And he's like, oh, no, man, I never need help from anyone. And I don't need help now. But you took help from Kelly. She became your third. That's accepting help. Like, <laughs> which, which is where I think that's where his character arc really falls apart is that they're trying to do two different plots with him. Plot one uh... is that he needs to be himself and he can't accept help from anybody and all that sort of thing but then plot two is he's for some reason in like the middle part of this movie just super into kelly to the point where anytime another guy is talking to kelly he's just like oh yeah that's your boyfriend right that's that's you're seeing that guy huh and it's like dude do something about it then like you this entire movie you're just pissed off that she's possibly seeing people and you never do anything about it and i thought oh they're going to do something with this like he's going to make a move and she's going to politely decline maybe Mm. even feel awkward because maybe she thinks this is a repeat of the whole franco thing but then realize no no, he's actually still a nice person he's not going to be a dick because it's just you know but it's together like her realizing no like i need to do this without getting romantically attached to anyone that i'm working with and Mm. maybe you know because because even from the other side of it it kind of felt it, there was times that in the first half of the movie where I was thinking, well, Ozone, do you want a third dancer so you can win, or do you just want to like be with her? Because right. there was times when he was getting upset about certain things, and I couldn't tell. I'm like, well, do you want to win, right? In which case, she's giving you that option, take it, or do you just want to to be with her? And I could see how that plot might clash with her plot. 
right? That she mm-hmm. has gotten out of this this more problematic sort of employer situation. But instead, both all these things just get dropped. Like yep. about halfway or so through the movie, they just stop being a concern and no one ever like does anything that advances them really in any way, shape, or form. Uh, the last time he shows any amount of jealousy is probably when he meets um Sure, McGavin for the first mm-hmm. time, which I guess we'll talk about his whole thing now. So, yeah, a, a half hour or so into the movie, she goes looking for a, a rep, an agency, and stumbles into Shooter McGavin, right? Who the actor's Christopher McDonald, but he's Shooter McGavin from Happy he's Gilmore. McGavin. And there was like a split second where I saw him, like, oh my god, I know your face. Who are you? Who are you? My, my brain was like, dude, dude, dude. I was like, locking in with like the, the Robocop reticule, like, dude, 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 scanning, scanning, trying to analyze. Oh, it's Shooter <laughs> McGavin. He eats pieces of shit for breakfast. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, and he meets her, and right away I'm like, oh, he's a sleaze ball. He's going mm-hmm. to just try and like manipulate her into sex. That's all he is. And it felt like, okay, he's the leveled up version of Franco. He's like someone up the ladder who she thinks is going to help her, but he's actually just going to be a bit of a predator because he's in this position to, you know, oh, I'm going to get you gigs. I'm going to do so much for you. And you're going to want to thank me because I did all these things for you. That's what it felt like it was setting up. And yeah. for a bit, it felt like that's what was happening. He was saying things like, hey, let me take you to dinner. Don't work with these break dancers. And of course, she takes him to the break dancing show where she's going to like doing the, the three on three thing, right? In mm-hmm. the middle of the movie. And he's impressed. But when he meets uh, Ozo and Ozo refuses to shake his hand, and it's like, okay, all right, fair enough. Yeah. But then well, after that point, though, for the rest of the movie, it does seem like he is genuinely just trying to get them hired as an act. Yeah. <laughs> that's the thing we we get another montage because at this point he's like look you guys were incredible i i want to be able to rep all of you we're going to get you some gigs and it's gonna be good and we get a montage of not only does shooter get them studio space to practice which seems like the biggest waste of money of all time but regardless uh and matching team jackets but then we also intercut with him on the phone looking more and more frazzled as he's unable to get anything yeah. booked for these guys and, because they're street dancers. And he even, like, at the end of the montage, he can, when he hands them the jackets, he comes in and both Turbo and Ozone, like, give him the fancy handshake because it's like a running thing where Turbo yeah. keeps doing the fancy handshake and he's just like, I, I don't know how to do that. Uh, but then at the end of the montage, he's learned how to do it. So, credit where credit's true. That's set up and payoff. You've paid off, you, you, you've set up the this thing so that when you see him do it at the end of the montage you understand that oh they've gotten to know each other he's learned this mm-hmm. and now they're friends this is better than the other one where he was suddenly just friends with uh, kelly at the end of the last montage yeah. but even Oz- ozone comes in and like puts his arm around him and i'm like wait you're best buddies now aren't you in kind of a love triangle isn't that what the movie was setting up i they guess were not. right up to this point and then the- <laughs> honestly this montage i think is the tipping point like as everything leading up into mm. this montage we have these love triangles we have this idea that ozone may only want to be with uh kelly we have kelly's whole thing about is she only being used for her body up till this point this montage is the tipping point where they realize like we don't want to do that stuff anymore so instead we're just gonna make it a super basic we'll reintroduce the villain guy of franco and we'll make it so they're just taking his place in a dance yeah. thing well, that's I, all we need i think bef- before this montage we did get the scene where uh shooter took her and invited all three of them to this oh, fancy that party before? Okay. that's before because they set up uh the uh what franco is basically going to blacklist them from like the industry because he doesn't mm-hmm. like them because because they run they run into him there and he's like oh kelly you walked out in me blah, 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 blah. right and there's a, a whole lot of the social class stuff is here because uh, Turbo and Ozone show up and all the rich white people are all look because everyone's nicely dressed yeah. and they're looking at them like they shouldn't be there and they're making little quips and there's these two old ones like, are you one of those little those kids that spin around on their head? Spins on their head. He's like, um, yeah, definitely. And so they're, they're really playing that card here and it's a whole thing. Uh, Ozone is very upset about the whole thing. Tries to grab uh, Frank. And at one point I thought Shooter was going to jump and say, Settle on the dance floor. Settle on the dance floor. I thought they were going to like basically set up that they're going to have a dance battle with the villain. Oh god! They now that you say that, I want it. Yeah, that would have been better. They didn't do that though. 
But still, we get this montage where Shooter McGavin is actually genuinely trying to get them booked as an act, not just her. Because, I, again, I thought someplace this might go because I thought he seemed really sleazy was that, oh, he's going to get her a job and make up an excuse and be like, oh, mm. I got you a job, but they're not really interested in the two guys. It's just you. Just you and me, baby. That kind of thing. But yeah. no, to, to, to his credit as a character, he actually does try and get them all a job. He talks to Kelly and says, look, I've tried everywhere, but basically Franco's reach has made it impossible and no one's accepting us because of him. Weirdly enough, he's the only dance company in all of SoCal. <laughs> who would have thought? But then he's like, yeah, they don't want people who are dressed with like spiked bracelets and, you know, mm. ripped shirts and all that kind of thing. And this is where she gets the idea. Well, let's try something else, even though, I mean, Ozone's not going to like it. But sure enough, cut to them all wearing like these tuxedos with hats, you know, like the old school yeah, like Fred, Fred Astaire, Astaire. Yeah. style dancing. And I, I was like, okay. And I looked at the time at this point. I'm like, wait a minute. There's like less than 20 minutes left. And I feel like whatever dance sequence we're going to get is probably going to take up a lot of those minutes. Mm -hmm. So sure enough, they go to this thing. It's an addition, effectively. And Franco was on with some of his partners auditioning before them. And they come in. Franco sees them, goes over to the table of judges and whispers something in their ear. And it's like, oh, I'm sorry, your group won't be able to audition. So Shooter McGavin comes over and he's like, why the hell not? Why, why, why not? Like, give them a chance. And they're like, this is a jazz dance audition and your group does not fit that criteria. And he's like, but come on, this is bullshit. This, this, so he goes over and tells them, right? Mm -hmm. And Ozone's like, to hell with this. No one's stopping me now. And music starts playing. And the only thing I could think in this moment was that, wait, is there music in the scene or just for the movie? Because if he's just dancing to nothing in the scene, this is going to feel really, really even more weird than it already is that he's forcing a dance audition on, on the judges. Yeah, I mean... I, I assume it's in the scene. I don't have that much of a problem with it, but I do love the entrance here is they basically say, like, who's next? And he says, Ozone, Street, and he rips his sleeves yes. off. And I'm like, how much, like, anger does he have to have to be able to rip the sleeves <laughs> off of these tuxedos and they it, don't come off that simple and he rips the other two rip off their sleeves as they watch him start and before they jump in but the mm. funniest thing about this and it was probably the most i had fun in the entire movie is the mm. absurdity of him dancing right in front of the table and the main judge this sort of like pompous old british man is like stop this stop this right now what stop, <laughs> stop this this is a jazz edition this dance is not acceptable yeah. and the fact that he was yelling that as he's still dancing, as if I'm like, like, is it really going to hurt you all if you just see the, the audition? Like, they'll leave afterwards and you just don't give them the role. It's, it's not yeah. that big a deal. But he's he's so outraged, right? And then the other two come in. I just want to say yeah. this. The other two come in and they keep dancing. Now, obviously, what this is going to do is that by the end of the dance sequence, they're going to win over the judges, right? Mm -hmm. That's the whole point, right? But it's almost a parody of when other movies do that, where the other movies... You, you know, they'll start off with a really sceptical panel of judges or audience, but by the mm. end, they're all convinced because it's that impressive, yeah. right? That was that was my favorite That's, bit there, that, was the, the the guy's yelling, he's shouting, he's like, oh, get these security, get these dancers off of our dance stage. And then one of the judges just puts out his hand. He's like, hold on. And then all of a sudden, oh, everyone starts watching. My, now, my favorite part is that after that moment where the one other guy sort of gets them to, no, let's just see what they've got. Yeah. The main British guy, like halfway through, it cuts to his face and one eyebrow just goes up. Like just yeah. one eye, I can't do it, but it's just one eyebrow goes up to, to be like, oh, this is something. And then the, the bit that made it feel like a parody to me is at the end of the performance, the entire panel of judges stands up and gives them an ovation. Oh God! This I, this is I an addition. It. This is an, like, and this is the end of your movie. Like after this extended sequence, which mm -hmm. is by far probably one of the least impressive dances in the whole movie. It, it felt like to me at least there, there was less going on in this one. Yeah, I, I I think the biggest problem I have with it in terms of it not feeling big isn't that the dance moves are lesser. It's that there's no like reaction like every other dance we've had has had like a circle of people around mm. who are like 
bopping around and dancing. This one, it's just the three of them on stage, and it, you can well, feel the lesser energy to it. What's funny, though, is I actually found it the most entertaining as a scene, because mm -hmm. the reactions of these judges that it kept cutting to was funnier than yeah. anything else in the movie. So, like, I, I preferred it as a scene, but in terms of being the impressive dance that wins the competition, which is, this is where I was thinking in my head, why didn't you just have a competition? And that could be the finale that you could build up to. It's not original, sure, but it, you know it gives you like a thing that you're building to the whole movie yeah. that could feel like a payoff. This out of nowhere is kind of the ending, except of course it cuts ahead in time. Apparently they're so successful after this edition with whatever show they put on that they uh, end up with their own show. We cut to a marquee that says there's three names, there's three like you know dance names, mm -hmm. uh, saying street dance or whatever i don't know what it was called yeah it's right? like jazz street or street jazz yeah. or something like that but they've got like a, a stage with like a sort of fake you know street backdrop and mm -hmm. all of the rivals are in this as well and it's this big dance where they do this big number from start to finish with their three leads the rivals a bunch of supporting acts uh, cupcakes is back in here dancing and mm -hmm. even though we just had a full dance sequence which was the convincing the judges to win the end of the movie dance we then get another full dance sequence of them just doing a dance number on a stage with a set. And then we get a music video recapping all of the dance scenes from earlier in the movie. So mm -hmm. there's probably like 20 full minutes at the end of this movie that's mm -hmm. just nothing but dancing with very little else consistently. Yeah. And I was ready to <laughs> throw something at the TV. I, like, I cannot tell you by the time oh, it got to God. the stage and they were doing like they're really fancy dressed up we're doing like street stuff but sort of on a budget mm -hmm. i was like okay i'm pretty sure i can just not pay attention now and the movie is just going to be over the next time i look up and that was basically true i did still pay some attention but you yeah. bet your ass i was looking at like twitter and shit whilst this was uh, all happening well pete did you also watch the after credits scene what no no <laughs> No, it's it's nothing. It's just like a single oh. shot of a dude doing like a weird spin thing, and then he stops. It's it's no plot. No, I did not watch the after credit scene. How dare you even suggest such a thing, you piece of I just, trash? I just wanted to throw that little <laughs> moment of horror into your life. Yeah. Um. No. Yeah. I mean, you describe it perfectly. There. I don't have an issue with it, but like, I th everything you're describing as like boring and like the things you're skipping over the in-between moments more or less is the stuff that i found hilarious like the dance numbers themselves they are many and there are probably like a huge amount that can just be trimmed down or cut out entirely if it weren't for the fact that it's the point of the whole movie it, i think it's at least half the runtime is just dance sequences yeah yeah that sounds right to me but the stuff in between like there is a sequence where um, it's, I don't even remember the setup because frankly, Ozone's pissed off this entire movie, but Ozone's pissed off and he goes down to Venice beach. He's sitting on the beach. Kelly goes that's to talk right, with him. That's right. This is after the party scene, I think. And this is like yeah. them rekindling afterwards. He goes down mm -hmm. to sort of like just look out at the ocean because you know, it's a movie character. He has to go and look at the ocean to like yeah. work through his problems. You got access to the beach. You're going to go down to the ocean. Yeah. Which um, actually, I'm glad you brought this scene up because he takes her to... Even though it feels like she's yes, supposed to be this making this, I was getting to. Yeah. Yep. Even though it feels like she's supposed to be making it up to him, he ends up sort of like taking her somewhere to prove something to her. But then the the movie then follows by him doing what she wanted, which felt mm -hmm. felt weird. It felt like he was convincing her of something, not the other way yeah. around. But anyway, the reason why I'm glad you brought this scene up is because when they go to see this guy doing his break dancing with the crutches, mm -hmm. I swear to I swear I swear I swear that I recognize this location from Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, because there's a Venice Beach level, oh, and I yeah. think this is literally part of that level where they're doing this little dance. I would be surprised. Uh, anyway, yes. But no, I, I absolutely love that sequence, though, because w your little confusion there as to who was convincing what of who of whatever. Oh, yes, yes. Like, this whole sequence is just a perfect little time capsule of that, where it's, she goes down to the beach, at no point does he explain why he's pissed off in any sort of coherent way all he basically says is like you don't know what dance means you don't know what dancing really is and he takes her to this guy who's doing great dancing with crutches and he's like look at his face that's what dancing is and i'm like i still don't understand yeah. what dancing is but then what, you what cut, are we saying but then you cut to the next scene and he's doing 
the stuff with the manager. He's like yeah, accepted to work in the dance studio with her. So this scene plays, like the movie plays out like this scene was her convincing him to come on board. But instead, the entire scene is him showing her what dancing really is. So it just doesn't flow. There's no like, this does not project into the next set of sequences. Like, yeah. it's almost it's, like the exact opposite happened. It feels like the sequence is supposed to be bringing us to the conclusion of they come to an understanding as to what the other one wants. But because the sequence is so convoluted, the audience is left without that understanding. Like, we don't know what's supposed to be going on yeah. here. And then we just skip ahead to the next thing that needs to happen. It almost felt like if the scene just had an extra little bit at the end where she said, yeah, you know what? I get what you're saying, Ozone. Mm -hmm. But if that's true, then you can be happy dancing anywhere too. So why not be happy dancing on a stage where you're going to be respected for it? And maybe that mm -hmm. could be how she spins it into convincing them to like, hey, let's work together with this manager and, and go... I mean, forget Cupcake. He was supposed to be the manager, but no one yeah. remembers him anymore. We're, we're going to go do this. Like, that might have made at least some amount of sense, but as it is, it, I, it, nothing. The whole reason he was pissed off there is m almost certainly because of his feelings towards Kelly, mm. and nothing in that sequence resolved that. So they kind of just had to keep it going because there was no other way to get it to where it needed to be. Yeah. And also, that's, that's something we talked about, like the feelings with Kelly thing. Everything else you can argue had a little bit of a wrap up to some extent. Anything having to do with Kelly, whether it be her body thing, whether it be the feelings Ozone has for her, none of it comes up. Absolutely none of it. To the point where during that little in the future dance sequence, she's not included until like three quarters of the way through. Yeah, they build up to her as if she's like a big entrance kind of thing. You say that, it feels like she like they forgot about her until the <laughs> end. It didn't feel like a build up. It felt more to me like, no, no, no. The other two are the ones who were actually dancers. And then Lucinda Dickey, who is Kelly's actress, was just cast because she's in a bunch of canon movies around this time. Yeah, I think she's in Ninja 3, The Domination, which I have seen. And I'm sure yep. one day, some way, we'll do the Ninja trilogy. But uh, Oh, good. But uh, as, as of now, so not cool. yet. Um, the only other couple, like, little things I wanted to bring up hey, is... Hey, Ninja 3 is better than this movie. I'm going to say that right now. Really? All right. That's shocking, Well, it's, actually. More, it's more entertaining, at the very least, though. I mean, on opening weekend, this this managed to outclass 16 candles in the theaters, so... This there's, is an all-time classic. I think there's clearly something wrong with 80s America, if that's the case, quite frankly. It was the Reagan years. That, that said, it's not like I've, I've seen 16 Candles, I want to stick up for that either, so I mean, yeah, whatever. True. It was, a, it was a, poor, a weekend of poor choices, okay? <laughs> okay. Yeah, fair enough. Um, but no, there's one sequence at the very beginning that I actually really enjoyed, and it was an intentional joke. And it was, uh, once she, I think it's once she quit the dance studio, she went out and tried to get some auditions on her own. Oh, yeah, and this is after she meets uh, McGavin, because sure, McGavin, McGavin sets her mm -hmm. up with these additions, that's right. Yeah, so she goes in front of these guys, she does a whole routine, and, like, she falls back in the flash dance position, and they stop her and just like, ah, oh, sorry, but we're, we're looking for someone who's a taller blonde. Smash cut, she's doing the exact same thing in a blonde wig, and they stop her and say, sorry, sorry, but we're looking for it. She interrupts, like, oh, let me guess, a shorter brunette? Screw you. And she just walks outside. I thought that was an intentionally and actually successfully funny sequence. Uh, yeah, that's okay, I guess. Uh, All right. Yeah. Uh, th did you enjoy, there's a scene early on where they never really talk that much about what Turbo and Ozone actually do for a living, but they do work in a store. And Turbo, <laughs> yeah. there's an extended sequence where he breakdance with his broom outside the store. This is before the rivals come up and do some trash talk, which has the wonderful... I mean, all of the, the line deliveries here are a bit funny because they're all quite bad. But mm -hmm. the standout is... Was it, I was, I'm was i going to like chew you up and spit you out like a frog or it's something like, like that? I think he said, like, we're piratas. We're going to oh, chew piratas. you up and spit out the bits we don't like. Then he spits. It's, then he does yeah, a girl spit. Like, spit. Yeah. But there was an extended thing where like this goes on for like four minutes of Turbo just like making the broom hover, and you can see the strings on his hand, like, you can actually mm -hmm. see it, but he's he's making the broom hover and sort of dance around it and all sorts. And honestly, it's probably one of the more, more impressive dance sequences of the movie, just because it's him dancing with a broom and it not being completely ludicrous. I mean, honestly, this felt to me like, you know how sometimes some like higher concept movies have like 
a little short demo scene that ends proof up getting of concept. Yeah, 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 proof yeah. of concept that's like folded into the movie itself because the sequence starts with them cleaning up the shop completely removed from the rest of the story. They never return to this shop at all, but they're cleaning up this shop and Ozone specifically says like, hey man, who do you think you are? Fred Astaire? And then he goes out and does this whole number with like the floating broom and all that stuff. Walks back into the shop and I swear to God, that was just the proof of concept scene where they were saying, like, see, breakdancing is like classical dancing, but for a modern audience. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, we're at 55 minutes, David. Uh, do you I have anything else you want to yep. say? <laughs> so during, the, uh, during the, the second dance battle sequence where they've brought Kelly along okay, okay. and are like yeah. saying, all right, we're going to do this sequence goes on for like 10 minutes it's a super long dance sequence here but the best part about it is kelly doesn't get involved for like seven of those minutes it's like, like they want, it's like they want her to be like a surprise like i, I get in the logic in the, the movie like mm -hmm. making is that she's not actually a break dancer so we'll limit as much she has she has to do as much as possible but i think mm -hmm. the idea in kayfabe was that like, oh, they don't think, they, they still think they've got us outnumbered, so we're going to show up and we're going to, like, just be two of us, and we're going to let them think that we're down, that we're out, that we're against the ropes, yep. right? And then Kelly's going to make this grand entrance and, like, yeah, like, they, they react like, oh, God, it's the girl from the beach! Oh, no! Like, that's Literally basically the reaction. that exact line. <laughs> it's the girl from the beach! But I think that's what the logic was for the characters in this scene. The actual reason may just be that, oh, we have to limit how much breakdancing she's doing, because she's I mean, she can clearly dance, but she's yeah. not necessarily a break dancer. Yeah, I mean, there were sequences during the training stuff where she was doing actual, like, flips and stuff. She was yeah, able yeah. to do those sort of movements. It was very obviously not a stunt person, but, like, yeah, it, it, I think it's an issue of putting her beside two people who can actually do, like, real break dancing. No matter how much she learned, it was going to be an issue of comparison like we're gonna see her kind of flail around in the back it's like ooh, let's let's just cut her out for a little bit and then we'll bring her back in later honestly the movie as a whole kind of feels like to me like one of those like you know you've, you've got someone who's got a talent and they want to show it off and most people mm -hmm. and i've you know having watched a lot of best of the worst and wheel of the worst specifically i've seen a lot of this they'll yeah. make a vhs tape right back in like the 80s into the early 90s you'd make a vhs tape and maybe say it's a dance instruction video and it'll maybe be 30 minutes 60 minutes even maybe more just mm -hmm. showing off your dance skills maybe you'll actually trying to teach some things as you're doing it but it's basically yeah. just hey that's show off for skills this to me felt like a slightly bigger budget version of that, where they got like a small production company and Canon to actually fund something that resembles a real movie, but it is mostly just a demo reel of their dancing skills with some stuff like fit around it to try and make it into a movie with a plot. Yeah. No, I get that. For me, I, I kind of felt it. the end product would end up being the same, but it felt to me more like... The, an executive or a market analyst got a bug up their butt of like, we need to make a dance movie. And then this is the one they just landed on. Like they thought that there was some sort of major market for this. Maybe some other movie hit it big, but they said, we're going to make a break dancing movie. Well, I don't I, care what it costs. I, I think both could easily be true. Like you, like what I just described as the motivation of the dancers getting involved in the film. What mm -hmm. you just described is why the studio wanted to make it like those true. two things. You know, yeah. they, they they marry together. That's why it maybe got greenlit ultimately is that both sides had their own motivations for doing it. But I, I guarantee you Canon then was just like, Hey, look, we'll give you like you know, twenty million dollars to make this movie. And then the people who were involved were like, If we can do it in ten, can we just get automatically greenlit for another ten sequel? Can we just <laughs> do that? I'm actually I'm just I'm looking at the wiki page because I really want to see uh right. Despite receiving negative reviews, the box office says a theatrical sequel entitled Breaking Two was released later in the same year. Yes, but I, mm. what I want to know is if it was basically shot as one film and split up, like we kind of guessed it might have been at the start. But, I mean, it's not saying anything. Yeah. Although I am now seeing on the Breaking on Breaking Two's page is another sequel, Rappin' was made. So um, that's awful to learn. Oh, don't worry, folks. We're just here for the first one. So we'll be moving on to another dance movie next week. Don't you worry. We'll be 
looking at a, a vote winner. I can't actually tell you what it's going to be because uh, yeah. our patrons are deciding. By the time this goes out, we'll know what the answer to that is. But right now, yeah, they're still voting. Um, so hopefully something better than breaking. Uh, I mean, hopefully. I'll say this. This made look Dirty Dancing look a lot better. I'll, I'll yeah, I was going to say, that's, that's the thing. Going into this, I was like, I... I hope Pete understands that there is a difference between good and da- good and bad dance movies. Of course I do. I'm not an idiot. That said, yeah. though, I if this was more leaning into the bits that I found funny, I could have found myself saying I enjoyed this way more because it was kind of a funny bad movie. It never mm. quite was that enough to really get to that point. But yeah, you know, like there was always a possibility that I would like a bad dance movie over a good one. Because it's funny enough to 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 be entertaining, but I mean, I still found it entertaining. As much as I'm gonna say it's a bad movie, I still found myself consistently laughing mm. at this throughout. Like whether it be the sort of like scene transitions, whether or not it was the just whatever there it is they're doing during the scene, and more specifically, a lot of Ozone's dance moves in this mm. are played so seriously like he has just this look on his face like yeah i'm getting it but like it's funny to watch him do it you know so i found it funny the whole way through to the point of i would say it's still entertaining yeah okay i mean it's not the worst thing ever like we've definitely watched worse movies especially on extra reels uh, which i'll tell Mm -hmm. you more guys at the end but (laughs) it's came up a few times talking about this because it is kind of veering into that territory yeah uh so I, I would say this is a it is a bad movie. It's not a complete disaster of a movie. At least it does have actual dancers doing the dancing that they're supposed to be good at and actually doing it. So that's at least something there. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is some funny scenes. Uh, it does at least keep it to a brisk 85 minutes, although some of yeah. the sequences do drone on a little bit. Uh, yeah. Okay, I think we're ready. Yeah, yeah it's over an hour. David, rate the movie. We did it! Woo. All right, so I would say, again, with the rating being much more based on, like, how much do I think it is competent rather than how much I enjoyed it, um, it's low. It's very low. I think this probably would be around, I'd say a three. It's It feels like three territory for me. Really? But it's just, yeah, like, I it's it did definitely have someone who knew how they were managing stuff behind the camera. Uh, it felt like, you know, it was a actual movie that was made. It felt like in saying it deserved to be in theaters might be a bit strong. I don't <laughs> think that it quite hit that level, but it did feel like it had actual money and sets and obviously licensing behind it. So I, I'd say a three is fine for this. It feels weird that I'm, possibly going to go a little higher than that but uh oh okay just, just, just well you know i think of a three and I, i'm thinking of uh things that are more train wrecks than this i guess mm. uh this to me is more like a four out of ten okay which is there's still like a, a general level of i don't know production value i guess for lack of a better term uh a couple of real actors at least you know there's an energy to it, if nothing else. It feels like the people doing it like what they're doing. Like it, it, It's kind of inoffensive, although the script is dreadful. Or mm. either, either the script is dreadful or it was edited so much after the fact that it lost like so much of a coherent plot that actually made sense. Yeah, that's fair. Actually, you know what? Look at looking at my ratings because that's the thing. Once you get to a certain point down the scale, there aren't as many things to compare to. I was comparing it off of things like the swarm and avalanche from our disaster season last uh-huh. time, and it, it, that's where I got the three from. But now that I'm looking compared to my ratings on like extra reels, <laughs> which again I think is probably a better comparison point, I'm seeing other things that I gave a three, like Christian Mingle the movie. <laughs> And I'm like, no, this is better than that. This is better than so I, I I'm gonna bump it up and match your four. Cause yeah, this is definitely more than that. All right. All right. Uh so yes, uh, Extra Reels is a bonus show we do in Patreon every month where we review some mm-hmm. of the worst movies of all time. Uh, that is the five dollar tier are up. Uh, every tier also gets access to the Criterion Cut where we review some of the best movies of all time. 
uh, from the Criterion Collection. So uh, mm-hmm. if you want to support the show and get some extras, plus those extras for other things from uh, Mail Fuzz movies and Mail Fuzz TV, then by all means, go and have a look and uh, see if you're interested. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Like I say, next week's dance movies well, well, a vote. Well, oh. Pete, we need to determine, is this in the collection? No, of course it's, it does not make the cut. Of course it doesn't. All right, fine. And I am, I wholeheartedly agree with that. However, I am going to say just normal cut from the collection, not cut your losses. Can you agree with that? I think we can go lower. So yes, I, 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 I all right. I, I can, I can agree with that. Um, Fair enough. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that I think the stuff we've got planned will go lower than this. I could see this being the lowest rated. Yeah, of what that's we've got fair. planned. But it's weird because thinking back to like my general idea as to what break in was, mm-hmm. I think I always thought it to be more prestigious than it was. Oh no. <laughs> this is this is uh, this is not yeah, that. No, <laughs> absolutely not looking at it now, but like just the idea, the concept of it, I was like, oh yeah, you know, break in set thing that like introduced people to break dancing in the eighties. So clearly it must have had some cultural impact to it. Yeah. I mean, the audience liked it more than the critics. It's got like 33% on Rotten Tomatoes, but the audience score is like 75 or something like that. So mm. uh, yeah. people have bad taste, basically, is that's, what we're That's saying. the judging the book by its cover thing going on. I watched the movie. That I'm not, that, I am not even paying attention to the cover. I, I, I'm judging the text. I'm judging the pages. You stupid critics judging the movie for what it is. <laughs> All right, that's the show, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you next week. And uh, I, I don't know, uh, to, to keep dancing or something. It's always nice if you can have diplomatic immunity. 